So you might be thinking, so what? We have external factors and internal factors that influence our concentration. So now what? What do we do? Salam and hello everyone. Welcome back to The Balanced Dean. So let's talk about Khushua. So Khushua is when we have complete concentration and focus and connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during Salat or prayer time. In general, many of us define Khushua as concentration, but during Salat time, we should have removed all other worldly thoughts from our minds. Prayer is not just simply a ritual that we as, com we as Muslims do, but it is also a very important part of our deen that brings us closer to our Creator and full attention should be on our Creator. That being said, many of us tend to lack khushua in prayer. And that's problematic because we aren't able to show up as we should in our prayer, you know, and in our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, many of us ask ourselves, why do we lack khushua? Perhaps we are lacking sleep, for example, and we find it hard to concentrate when it is time to pray, or our minds are racing with a litany of things to do, including cooking, cleaning, childcare, or studying. You know, perhaps we have mismanagement issues with regards to time and we are always racing to make up for our prayers or to make up our prayers. One of the things that I've noticed is that jumping from my phone or computer into Salat and trying to get ready for Salat can be challenging and it can be hard to concentrate at times. You know, something that I think we should also discuss more as a community, especially amongst us sisters, is learning to master getting into a state of concentration. So how does one do this? If we build the day's work around Salat, perhaps it would be easier for us to turn off all other responsibilities and thoughts so that we can focus on Salat. You know, should we make it a point that from the beginning of our wudu to the end of our Salat that we are only going to be thinking about Salat and block everything out? Perhaps easier said than done. So in my research, which included scientific publications and listening to lectures, I have some information that I'd like to share with you. From a scientific perspective, there were two general factors that influenced a person's levels of level of concentration. The first exogenous or external factors such as time pressures and intellectual challenges. Then there is endogenous or internal factors such as motivation. So you might be thinking, so what? We have external factors and internal factors that influence our concentration. So now what? What do we do? Well, I have conjured up a few ways that we can improve our khushua, especially if you are someone with a lot on your plate. So you have a lot of external factors, including juggling responsibilities such as school, work, business, and raising a family, for example. And there is also advice if you have some internal factors impacting your concentration. Before Salat, you know, before you can actually make Salat, you may need a few moments to block out the stimulation you have received from your computer, the phone, the TV, the chatter. It may be ambitious or challenging for some of you who are constantly busy with these devices for work or school, for example, but it might be just what you need in order to calm your nerves, in order to get into a mindset ready for Salat. Nothing is worse than starting prayer and the thoughts of what you just watched on TV plague your mind or what you saw on your Instagram feed just put you in a bad mood or made you jealous or made you contemplate what am I doing with my life? You know, Even though you've returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship and in your prayer at that very moment. A lecture I recently watched recommended we make dhikr before Salat. That way we are consciously placing the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our minds, giving less possibility for all of the worldly issues to creep in and mess up our prayer. Something that I recently came upon was a sheikh who had encouraged, you know, the Ummah to pray like the Prophet, peace be upon him, prays. That way you are emulating the best of humanity in something that will bring you closest to your Creator. And I thought that was beautifully said and I think that's something that I personally am going to do more research in so inshallah that will help me with my khushua during Salat. So that's something for maybe you to look into as well, inshallah. How about finding a quiet place to pray? Being intentional about finding a clean and quiet place to pray may benefit you in the long run. Sometimes this may not be easy with small children running around. You know, there are times when I lock myself in a room to pray and other times I leave the door unlocked. Some of you with younger children can relate to having your Salat interrupted by kids, asking for food or needing help with certain activities. You know, some Sometimes they can actually join you in your Salat, which is a great thing, mashallah. Honestly, I try to leave the door unlocked as much as possible and make dua for guidance and support and mercy for myself and my children. Another thing you can do is to assess your stress 
and what is going on with your mental health. You may be going through some challenging times. This is something that we don't talk about enough in our community and that is some of us are truly or may truly be struggling. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you and if you can turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during Salat especially and rely on him to get you through these trying times inshallah it will be easier and better for you. Additionally, you may actually need to talk to a qualified professional who is not only trained in mental health but also knows the dean. Mental health issues can be masked because we may want to appear as if nothing is wrong but we should take a moment to evaluate ourselves to see if there's anything that we can sincerely work on. We should also focus on the words that we are saying and the meanings of these words during Salat word for word. You may even decide to try and recite out loud. This is a very good mental exercise because it allows you to truly connect to the meaning of the Quranic verse you are saying to that of your prayer. What attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are you recalling in your prayer? What is the meaning of the verse or the verses that you are reciting? I have been leaning on this a little more recently to try and improve my kushua. On this channel I have also discussed the importance of getting adequate sleep. Now this may be more complex for shift or night workers. However, balancing one schedule, you know, with regards to Salat will hopefully over time get you into a routine of proper sleep week cycle that is, you know, our circadian rhythm. This can also in return help you concentrate in your Salat. Another thing we need to do is we need to eat mindfully. Sometimes we tend to over or under eat depending on our situation. We may have experienced being bloated and in gastric distress during Salat or even Tarawiyah for example, you know, when we have gone overboard with our eating. And other times if we haven't properly nourished ourselves, we may feel fatigued, we may experience stomach cramps and all of these things can lead to a lack of focus in prayer. I've also created a video on food deserts, so if you're interested in watching that, I've left a link below. Also, ease yourself when necessary. Aisha, peace be upon her, reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, there is no praying when a meal is presented nor when one needs to relieve himself. So simply put, when you know you need to use the bathroom, go ahead and use the bathroom. Make your wudu and hopefully you will have the utmost concentration and connection in your salat. Again, a reminder to understand the importance of salat and the time that is required for us to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship. What better time to put our full focus back to our creator and when done make dua and ask for whatever our heart needs, desires, or wants. Insha'Allah this video has been beneficial for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you to find khushu'a in your prayer. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Masalam.